السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. So today we are going to go over things that break one's fast. Okay. Things that break one's fast are of two kinds. Some make only qada necessary, whilst others make both qada and kafara compulsory. Now what is qada? We know this, but we'll still go over this. Qada is to keep one fast in place of one that breaks, or is broken intentionally. <laughs> Basically making up. Qada is for salah as well. Um, so qada, to keep one fast in place of one that breaks, or is broken intentionally. For example, somebody has to throw up, right? And there's different opinions of different ulama, but if somebody throws up a lot, then without a doubt their fast is broken. You know, more than a mouthful, they're going to become weak. Then they should have something to eat. This is the opinion of many of our ulama. For example, somebody's bleeding profusely. Like, you know, they, they got stabbed. They're bleeding a lot. In that case, rather than weakening oneself, the shuyukh of the ulama will say, eat something, drink something. Don't, don't put yourself in a perilous situation. Sheikh, <laughs> is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So the next thing is kafara. To keep one fast after another for 60 continuous days. In the matters of fasting, this is what the kafara is. However, if one is unable to keep these 60 fast for some valid reason, continuous sickness, then one has the options of choosing from one of the following four. Now, kafara will become compulsory on somebody. Qadha and then kafara is if you intentionally break the fast, you have nothing is wrong with you and you decide your friends want to have lunch. And you go have lunch with them. It's like, you know what? It's okay. Allah is all forgiving. Let's go have lunch. And you go and you have the best shorma. That shorma will cost you this qada, the kafara, and also the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And honestly speaking, even if you like, you know, we ask, you know, we talk to the sisters, like I talk with my wife, they, they always say one thing that, you know, for the fast that they miss in the month of Ramadan, they're like, it's not as much joy in making those up outside of the month. It's just not there. Ramadan just has that joy that you can't find anywhere else. So, what are the following four conditions which the ulama have given us? Okay, feed 60 poor, poor people to their fill for two meals. Okay, the second one is feed one poor person two meals a day for 60 days. Give 60 poor people three and a half pounds of wheat or its value in cash or food grains. Give to one poor person not less than three and a half pounds of wheat, rice, or food grains, or its value in cash for 60 days. So these, like the second two, it's best to ask the ulama, which are local to you, how you should abide by this. For example, if you give somebody, or you find 60 people and you give them three and a half pounds of wheat here, they may not be able to use it. You know, they may not be making bread or something. So as the local scholar, what is a good thing to give? Whether it's feeding them, whether it's money or whatever, it's the equivalent that the local sheikh or the local scholar will explain it to you. <laughs> that, for example, like, you know, um, fitrah, right? Fitrah, it, it varies depending on if somebody gives it according to the different categories. If you give it according to the wheat, if you give it according to the dates, it, you know, different, different values. So you want to ask your local scholar, which is the most complete way or the best way of giving this kafara, if if you do break your fast in a way like that, and inshallah next week we'll go over things that break one's fast but only make qada wajib. So jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.